Hey, hey, I'm commercial photographer Tony Roseland and welcome to the studio. Today we are actually in my shooting space because I wanted to talk about overhead camera rigs. I've got an option for that that I think is pretty good. I've been using it for a few years for all types of photography. It's super stable and extremely versatile and allows me to shoot tethered. It's simple to set up and it doesn't cost a lot of money, so stick around. So we're back and as you can see, I'm leaning on my FOBA stand here. And this is typically what I use in the studio. It's a studio stand that allows me to move uh, the arm up and down and in and out. And on the end, I have a ball head here. This is my Really Right Stuff BH55. And I can put my camera on this and shoot directly down over top of a set, uh, which is great in the studio. Problem is, I'm guessing a lot of people don't own a $10,000 FOBA stand, so they need to come up with an alternative solution. Now, I've seen a whole bunch of DIY options out there and using different grip equipment and things to create a solution for this. I've got my own that I hadn't seen anybody else use before, so I thought I would share it with you guys. This other thing about this FOBA stand is dragging this thing out on location is not really an option for me. I've heard of people actually doing that, but this thing weighs a ton. So let's get this thing out of here and I'll show you what's going on behind me. The cool thing about this is it's inexpensive, it's easy to set up, you probably already have the gear to do it with the exception of maybe one or two pieces that don't cost a lot of money. Uh, what I like about it is that if I'm on set, rather than just dangling the camera off of the end of a boom arm or something like that, which I've seen around the internet, that's great. If that's all that you have, that's great. But when you start to get on set with multiple people, food stylists, art directors, etc., people tend to bump into stuff. And I don't want stuff to fall over. I don't want anybody to get hurt, and I don't want my gear to break. So I want something that's more stable. The other nice thing about this setup is I can take it way up in the air if I need to shoot top-down images of, say, area rugs or something like that, which I've done before it works great because I'm tethered into a laptop I can just extend that USB cable and then run it down to the laptop and use the live view to see and compose my shot I can move the stuff around on set uh, and so that I know exactly what the camera is going to be capturing so definitely use a piece of software whether it's your Canon EOS software or whatever Nikon's equivalent is or capture one it's 2018 and Lightroom still doesn't have live view what's up with that Adobe um, I Wish that they did but that's one of the reasons that I typically don't shoot tethered into live uh, Lightroom because I want that live view. First off I have two C stands flanking the set. On top of each C stand I have what's called a super clamp. Now most manufacturers make both of these components whether it's Manfrotto Avenger, Matthews, Coupo, Impact, whatever they all make C stands. They all make some form of super clamp. There's a couple different options when it comes to super clamp. I like the ones that don't have a giant knob sticking off the side like a like a propeller thing hanging off the side I rather just it's not a, like a big lever thing I don't even know what you call it but I don't like it I like the ones that are a much smaller knob I can adjust those um, and I'm not getting caught on stuff and hanging off my clothes when I'm walking by the set and whatnot so uh, just something to think about when you order those super clamps then what I've done is I've taken a piece of conduit it's a two inch piece of EMT now this is different from rigid pipe if you go to the hardware store and you tell them that you want a two inch pipe they're going to give you like a rigid pipe that's heavy as all hell and you're not going to want to carry that around with you plus you're probably not going to be able to cut through it and you're going to be walking around with a 10 foot pole literally uh, this is a piece of EMT it's made out of aluminum I cut it down to about six feet which I find fits most sets if I need a wider setup for some reason for a wider table I can always use a full length piece of EMT or cut it down to whatever length I want cool thing is it's only like I don't know maybe 15 bucks for a 10 foot piece of two inch EMT so I'll put links to all this stuff down below so don't freak out if you're not catching all of this I'll put links um, to everything that I mentioned today so Again, once I clamp this uh, EMT into those super clamps, then in the middle I put another super clamp. On that super clamp I put a camera mount bracket and then I mount my camera to that. 
Alternatively, I can take the ball head off of my FOBA stand and put on here instead of this regular camera mount. And that gives me some articulation with the camera over the set, but uh, a lot of you guys may not have ball heads or may not even have detachable uh, tripod heads at this point. Um, so if you don't, this is a good option. They're fairly inexpensive. Again, I'll put a link below. This gets me out over top of my set. I tether out of the camera into my laptop. My laptop is sitting over here on another stand, but you could put it on a table or whatever. Uh, just if you're wondering, this is an innovative DigiPlate Pro uh, that I have the laptop sitting on. It's got a Digi base on it, which allows me to mount it to a typical stand. I could hang it off a tripod. I could do, they have a million different mounting options. Again, I'll put a link down below for the innovative products, but that's a whole nother video. The, the point of tethering is so that I can see my composition without having to look through the back of the camera because when the camera gets higher, or your set gets bigger and you can't reach that viewfinder of the camera, you gotta be able to see to compose your shot. Plus, you can trigger the camera remotely right from the laptop, so yay. The next piece of the puzzle is the shooting surface, and you gotta have something fairly versatile. So, I like to start with just a flat white surface, and then I can put other surfaces on top of that. That allows me to have a base, a foundation, and then whatever I put on top of that, be it a wood surface or a paper surface or whatever I happen to be shooting on, I can slide that around on top of this base surface. Now this base surface is just a piece of white laminate, and the secret source for my uh, surfaces is Ikea. You see on the back of this, there's little holes in here. This used to be a tabletop or a cabinet door or something like that, uh, maybe a desktop. And I go to the ding and dent section at Ikea and I dig through there and I get a ton of surfaces there. They're all dirt cheap. They're like 10 to 20 bucks for all different kinds of surfaces. I love it because you can get all kinds of different colors and textures and wood grains and everything else. I mentioned this in my tutorial that I did on product photography. And and since then, I've seen it thrown around in forums and stuff around the internet. So I'm glad to see that people are using that as a resource these days. But go to the IKEA ding and dent section and uh, dig through there and find some of these surfaces. Find yourself a nice sized uh, white surface to use as a foundation for your, for your tabletop shooting. And it'll probably last you forever. That's the nice thing about these surfaces. The next thing about the base, the foundation here is what I'm actually putting this surface on. So this one is going on top of what I call an X table. X as in the letter X. I don't know if that's what it's actually called. That's what I call it. To be honest, I don't even remember where I got this thing. I'll find it online and I'll put a link down below for you guys so that you can go find one as well. It was not expensive. It was probably overpriced at 100 bucks if I remember correctly, but you can probably get it for less if you shop around a little bit. So once you know what you're looking for, basically it's called an X table because it looks like an X. It folds up and it can lean against a wall. It can go in my car, whatever. It's nice and portable and compact. Doesn't take up a lot of space in the studio or in the back of my truck. It's got these rubberized, um, insulators, they remind me of pipe insulation uh, on it. And what that does is keeps the surface from sliding around when I put the surface on top of it. Uh, these chains on the end, I can change the slack in these chains and the more slack I put in the chain, the wider the legs are gonna go, which is gonna give me a lower platform to shoot on. So if I need to get my shooting surface lower, then I can certainly do that with this. Alternative to the X table would be using apple boxes. Let me grab one. These are apple boxes. They're just wooden boxes that have handles cut out in the end. They're made out of plywood. They've got a baffle in the middle to make them strong so you, people can stand on them. Uh, think if you had a, a bride and groom you were doing a tight portrait of, you could put the bride or the groom on one of these and level out their height. Uh, if you're doing a group photo, if you needed to uh, raise um, a, a larger product up, maybe you're shooting a group of products, you needed to raise one up. I stand on these when I need to shoot stuff. So if I need to get up higher behind my camera, I can stand on one of these. So you could stand on them this way, this way, or this way. This one is made by Matthews, but I think pretty much all the manufacturers make Apple boxes these days. They should be a standard size. I have a few oddballs back there that are not. My recommendation is stick to the Matthews because they're kind of the, 
the go-to brand for these things. They make them in different sizes as well as far as a half apple box this way or this way or pancakes or quarters or whatever. This is considered a full apple box. So these things are super versatile. If you don't have apple boxes yet, definitely buy yourself a couple of apple boxes and keep them with your kit. When you go out on location, you'll start to find uses for the things. When you're shooting top-down images, you can lay these apple boxes down on their side or even vertical and then put your surface on the apple boxes. So if you set a pair of these up and put your surface on them, or this way and put your surface on them, if you don't have the option to tether, this may be a good solution for you because it'll keep everything lower to where you can actually get over the viewfinder and peek in the back of the camera. So uh, if you don't have an X table, but you do have apple boxes, maybe that's an option, whatever. Just throwing stuff out there. Hopefully this video has given you guys some idea of how to set up a top down or lay flat setup. This one is super stable. I like it a lot. I've been using it for years. If you have other things that you use or better options than this even, put them in the comments down below because I'd love to hear about them. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, definitely subscribe so you can keep up with all the latest things we have coming out. And if you're so inclined, you can follow me over on Instagram. That's it for now. Until the next one, thanks for tuning in guys. I'm out.